How's it going my bakers? I hope you're having a great day. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Chain Baker and in today's video I'll show you the importance of degassing your bread dough as it's fermenting. Let's go to the kitchen and check it out. It is quite common to find instructions for degassing, punching down or knocking back your bread dough as it's fermenting. I would say most recipes include this step. As the dough ferments it fills up with carbon dioxide expelled by the yeast which is feeding on simple sugars which are broken down by enzymes from the starch in the flour. The gas accumulates in pockets inside the dough held together by the gluten structure. As the dough ferments and fills up with gas it expands and that's one of the main purposes of fermentation. We want the dough to rise up and become a nice and light bread so why would we want to punch the gas out? It seems that it would defeat the purpose of fermentation. Normally punching down is performed halfway through bulk fermentation and the punching down or degassing can be accompanied by folding. In fact both are done in the same step and these two actions go hand in hand not only during folding but also when dividing, pre-shaping and final shaping the dough. And no matter how gently you try to handle your dough you will always degas it if only a little bit. In today's comparison video we'll make four breads. They will be made from the same dough but they will all be treated differently. It is a 65% hydration dough containing only flour, water, yeast and salt. We'll keep it simple so the results are clearer. As I mentioned earlier, degassing or knocking back goes hand in hand with folding, pre-shaping and final shaping. So the first one of the four breads will be left alone from the beginning of fermentation until it's baked. The second dough will only get a final shaping. The third dough will be pre-shaped, rested and then shaped again before final proofing. And lastly the fourth dough will get a fold during bulk fermentation, then a pre-shaping, resting, final shaping and then it will be baked. So all the loaves will be handled progressively. The first one won't be touched at all and the final one will be folded, shaped and degassed three times. And we won't be fermenting them for the same amount of time. We will be fermenting them to the same volume. This test is not to show what is better or worse. It is there to show you the differences. It is up to the requirements of the recipe how many times it's going to get folded or degassed. And it is also up to the baker when it comes to the texture and shape that the bread should have. Understanding these principles will give you the power to create any recipe you like in your style. Okay, we got our four dough balls. The first one is going straight into the tin. And this will be the last time we touch it. It goes in the tin, ferments, and then it will be baked. And we'll fold them and degas them progressively from left to right starting with this one. Now I keep going on about folding and shaping but this is a video about degassing right? Like I mentioned earlier no matter what you do you will degas the dough. Folding, pre-shaping and final shaping are just steps that we take during the process of bread making. In fact you would almost never make a bread like the one on the left and there's a good reason for it. That's why first we're going to talk about folding. But I'll keep it brief since I've made a full video on this topic and you can find it in the steps of baking playlist. Folding achieves a couple of things. First off, it degasses the dough. Secondly, it builds tension into the dough. If the dough is weak and loose, by folding it, we can tighten it. This makes it rise higher vertically instead of spreading out sideways. A stronger dough will also be able to hold more gas and take more fermentation before deflating and falling flat. And what you're seeing here on the screen is the first fold halfway to bulk fermentation. The dough becomes tight, but it's also deflated so it's gonna have to rise up again. The folding step is similar to the pre-shaping and final shaping step in that the dough gets more tension built into it. Now some breads benefit from this and some don't. If you have very loose dough it's good to give it even more folds during bulk fermentation than one and it's good to shape it more tightly because the pre-shaping and final shaping steps are not just there to make the bread look nice. They also build more tension making the dough tighter and a dough like that will spring up better in the oven. Now we've gone through bulk fermentation now it's pre-shaping time and while I'm pre-shaping I can tell you another thing that folding achieves. It can equalize the temperature of the dough making it ferment more evenly. Let's say your kitchen is cooler than your dough. As it sits and ferments the outside of the dough will start cooling down and adjusting to the temperature of the kitchen while the middle may still stay warm. So as we fold the dough we fold those outside layers into the middle distributing that temperature evenly throughout it and that is folding in short. There are different folding methods for different breads. It all depends on what the dough is like. But let's get back to degassing. Why would we want to knock the fermentation gases out of the dough? Why don't we leave it alone and let it rise? And it would never punch you. So why are you punching it? Punching is actually quite aggressive and you should never punch your dough. 
the best thing to do is to deflate it by pressing it gently. As the dough ferments, the gas pockets inside it grow larger and larger, and the membrane of dough between those pockets can tear, and the pockets of gas can fuse into larger pockets of gas. If this process keeps going undisturbed, the crumb of the bread can end up with large bubbles surrounded by dense areas of dough. This is of course not always a bad thing, some high hydration breads are specifically made to have that texture. As we punch down or deflate the dough, the gas pockets break down and split up, resulting in a more tightly packed and even crumb structure. What the texture of the crumb should be is up to the baker. You can manipulate the dough to have a certain texture. If you handle it gently during each step, it will end up with a more open crumb with large air pockets. If you deflate it a lot, it will be tighter. Now we are doing the final shaping here, and the doughs are ready for the final proof. I tried to shape them as similarly as I could, so that the main difference between these breads would be the steps that we took or skipped. Now degassing, folding and shaping is not just about what the crumb will be like, it's also a way of controlling fermentation. The loaf on the left is almost ready to be baked, while the other three, they still need about an hour until they go in the oven. As we know, fermentation builds flavor, and it helps develop texture of the crumb and the crust. By degassing the dough, we are forcing it to rise back up again. It basically has to start over, so a bulk fermentation that can take 3 hours can be stretched out to take 4, even 5 hours. Of course there is a limit. You may have noticed that after punching your dough down, it starts fermenting more rapidly. This is because the old built up carbon dioxide actually slows down fermentation, so knocking the old gas out makes the yeast ferment more rapidly. Ok, it's time to bake these three, and now we can compare the results. And just on the outside, there are some big differences. For one, the crust on this loaf separated. That could be all those gas bubbles fusing together and finding the path of least resistance. And we see a good progression of oven spring. The more the dough was shaped, degassed and handled, the higher it rose. That may seem quite counterintuitive, but as I mentioned earlier, tension is what makes the oven spring happen. And the dough on the right was the tightest one, because we folded it, pre-shaped it and final shaped it. Now let's have a look at the crumb. And of course, as I explained earlier, if the dough is left undisturbed, it will result in a crumb with large holes surrounded by denser dough. And that's exactly what we're seeing here, on the bread that wasn't degassed at all. And like I said, degassing pops those air pockets. So the loaf that got the final shaping has a more even crumb, and it rose higher of course, resulting in a softer texture. And as we keep going, the bread become progressively softer, and lighter, and larger. And as I said earlier, we're not trying to prove what is better or worse, even though the first bread is clearly the worst, and you should not be making bread like that. If you want to use this method, it should be fermented for much longer, and perhaps go in a higher tin. At the end of the day, it's all up to you. Make your bread the way you like it, make it fit your style and taste, experiment, try different methods, don't just follow recipes, ask questions, and if you ever get stuck, check out more videos in the Principles of Baking playlist, you might find some answers there. So what do you think of degassing? Do you degas your bread though? Let me know down in the comments, and don't forget to read the blog post linked in the video description, I always write down things that I forgot to say in the video. See more videos like this one, click right here, subscribe to the channel, click over here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.